Okay, so this is kind of part two of the project, is how do I service a damn quick reel? And how do I switch the drive from a right-handed drive to a left-handed drive? Now, just previously, uh, we just did how do you service the drag, so we're not going to, to work on that one on this reel. But we are going to work on the rest of the service. This one has a bad bail, and as we kind of figured out here, uh, there's a broken piece that's uh, preventing this reel from fully setting after the trip where when it comes back in this should be a 90 degree angle here and there's a piece that is broken off of that we uh, may try to file it down but uh, this bail does need to be replaced and uh, I'm not sure if filing is going to get that done but uh, we'll leave that for the last piece of this Okay, so how do you service a day? Uh, DAM Deutsch, Deutsch uh, Engelet manufacturer or uh, German fishing manufacturer. It's a 440, and uh, let's show you. So the first thing to do uh, in a complete teardown really is to remove this handle. There's different ways to do that, but you have a punch pin here that's holding that handle in, and so the best thing to do then is just get a, a regular uh, small punch Make sure that it's not uh, greater or bigger than the uh, than the little pin that's in there. In this case, this will work. And you want to start uh, by just punching that out. I'm just going to put it where I have some space and then just tap it out. It's a roll pin. It just taps out. You'll see that I've just got it started there. I'm going to put that off camera here. I have a little bench vise that will hold it. I don't want to shatter anything, of course. You can hear it tapping in the background as I push it out. And I'm not quite out, and this is a little bit too much, so I'm going to go to my ever, ever trusty pin that you see me use for multiple things. As I've mentioned in the past, that pin is a, uh, it's a lifesaver to me and it's a multi-purpose tool. I'm trying to find a balance where I clear the axle shaft but leave the pin in, just like that. So there's your pin, your handle is off now. I apologize for being off camera on that, but uh, so sometimes you just can't get it done. All right, so that's going to go into my part tray. You'll notice I'm wearing a protective glove as I do this. We're going to remove then this handle adjuster and set. There's a washer. Remember the order. Take it off. Uh, take pictures along the way as you do this. That's a good way to help you remember how this goes. So I'm just going to place those into my tray and continue to unscrew the screw and there may or may not be and there is a little washer behind that and I just want to pry that out I'll go use a actually it's a, a c-clip is, is it that appears to be a c-clip I've had my share of c-clips this week There you go, that's the C-clip that's going to be the last hold fast for that main gear. So let's just recap quickly on this. We pushed out the pin. If it goes all the way out, no worry. Behind the pin was a washer. Then there was the screw assembly that holds the uh, handle. And then there is a C-clip that goes in behind that holds the gear in place. With that done now we can take off our our uh, side plate assembly, our gear. There's three screws. Find the right screwdriver. Now these are older reels. If you uh, are concerned about them, these this reel looks clean, but if you're concerned about these reels then what you want to do is you want to spray this down pretty good with some kind of a uh, penetrating an oil, whether it's a WD-40 or, 
or liquid wrench or ace penetrating oils, uh, any of the generic brands, that would be fine. What I'm doing now is I'm pulling the three screws to make sure that they're all the same size. That'll release the side plate over here. Notice when you do this now that the side plate is down. It's away from the arm. Uh, just so that as you go to reassemble, uh, you can figure that one out. This side then becomes the release point. And you want to get this. This should have just pushed through. And your assembly you would have opened up with a push through like this. And you want to roll this so that you can remove the clamp from the carrier. Alright, so that removes the, the uh, crosswind arm and the main gear, and uh, we can see that this has not had the deep cleaning. And then we have a micro screw here holding this one to the axle shaft. Let's see if we can get it with this screwdriver. Yep, we're going to need a micro screwdriver. It's always good to have your tools close at hand on these because uh, if you were disrupting anything along the way, then you, uh, you kind of lose your, lose, your, lose your track. Okay, so there's a little screw here. So this one's making you use all of your, your tools and your knowledge, that's for sure. As uh, you have a C-clip there, you have a roll pin, you have some uh, little kind of hidden joys here. Right, that should be it now. The pin is out. There we go, that's out. And then your shaft is out. Now this is easy enough to get confused here, so I'm just going to put that right back in there. I'm going to put that screw back in there so that I don't have to go looking for this when it's time to reinstall. And we'll just clean that shaft off. I'm going to use some steel wool to do that. There's a little bit of dirt underneath here. I'm just going to run my pin in there to get that out. Okay. Now that's going to go into my tray. My three screws are going to go into my tray. And now I can, with that pin off, I can remove the handle nut, uh, the rotor nut. <laughs> Using a Mitchell tool, this one comes in handy as well. I'm going to remove that. And if you don't have this tool, just use a deep socket. It's a 12 millimeter. Once you remove that, you should be able to pick up on the rotor assembly. And take some sense. Well, there we go. Take some hand strength to get that off. There's two pieces in here. There was the washer and the little keyway. Let's go ahead and that up while we have this off. And this is the bail spring assembly. All that needs is, you don't need to take it off, but it has a little trigger screw in there, just like the uh, axle shaft did. If you needed to remove that, you can use a micro screwdriver. But uh, as we saw, this one's tripping fine. The problem that we have here is in that uh, bail wire itself. Okay, that goes in. <laughs> Let's get to that bearing. Oh. So the uh, more tools. This is a snap ring that's holding this assembly in. Okay, here's my snap ring pliers. Snap ring pliers have these two little points on them. Let's see if this is the right one. You set those into the snap ring and you pull in and that removes it from the groove. Be careful, it's a spring. If you lose your hand strength, it's going to shoot. There you go with that. Let's uh, clean that up while I have that. I'm going to 
put that on my parts tray and we should be able now to pull this whole assembly out. We have a little shield here and we have our little collar bearing underneath the shield. So this is a grease packed bearing. It's uh, kind of old school, but let's go ahead and pack it with grease. So uh, this reminds me of the older automobiles when you took those spindles off you had a had a jam pack it all with grease. So I'm just going to grab a flat bladed screwdriver into my grease tray and just going to load that up. Brings back memories. Wheel bearings. Don't use wheel bearing grease in this. <laughs> I've seen it. Don't do it. Fishing wheel grease. Okay, I'll just clean this little portion up here. Go ahead and get that back on. There's a little spring assembly here. And I'm noticing we have the same below, so let's, uh, doesn't hurt to put more grease in there. What'll happen is it'll shed out. I'm just going to use my grease brush for this side. It will shed out if you uh, put too much in, but it's got no place to go in that carrier, so we're kind of all right with that. Just load that up, make sure that it's turning easily. Right now then just clean off the pinion gear then. And I'm checking, making sure that these tracks are all clear. They are. And we can reinstall this one. Let's clean that a little bit. There's a little bit of junk underneath here. So let's get that out of the way while we're at it. Just the old grease. Make sure we get grease onto the pinion gear at this point. Lest we forget. Okay, and then we'll put that pinion gear back in. Whoops, got a little bit of dirt in that channel there. Let's get the old grease out of that. Just using a paper towel. So we can reload this. reverse. You want to pull in and you want to seat this. There you go. Snapped right in. And that's that top assembly with fresh grease. Now we were asked to change this over so that the drive is a left-hand drive versus a right-hand drive. So we can, we will mount this way, but before we do that, we gotta go clean this whole thing up. So, if you want to, you can take your swing arm or your crosswind arm off. There's a C-clip here. I'm gonna choose just to work around that. If you were replacing the main gear, could certainly do that, but this is only flexing on a stud, so I'm just going to work the old grease out of there, making sure I got it all cleaned. It's a lot of gummy grease here at the moment. Then I'm going to hit that with some spray, hit the whole shaft with some spray. I'm going to turn off my uh, camera for a moment. I'm just going to let that soak. And when we come back, we'll reinstall and show you how to put this back together as a uh, left-hand crank it versus a right-hand crank it. Okay, so we're back. And uh, what, I, what I did in the interim, I did take this off. I wanted to clean it, but I also remembered that when you go to, to change this, you have to change the orientation on the arm uh, so that it's properly set in the case anyway. This one was set up for the other drive. You have to flip it 
make that work properly. So, uh, so I went ahead and did that. So let's, uh, we've got a clean thing. Let's go ahead and do that then. You flip the orientation. Those two pieces belong up with the clip. So flip the orientation. Little catch lever over it. And there was a C clip as I noted before that was holding it on. You didn't see me take that off. So you'll see me put that back on. So this is a lot different than the uh, the newer reels where all you do is change the uh, the handle. This one uh, causes you to do uh, more work, right? All right, so I've wiped all of this off. I've cleaned this off. I'm going to lube this now. And I'm using a fishing reel grease. I'm using Penn's Precision Reel Grease for this. I'll make sure that we have a lot on the axle. I checked the teeth while I was doing the other thing before, but check the teeth on the main gear. Make sure that uh, they're all symmetrical and that they're working properly. And then you can grab your assembly here. Insert the drive. There's a little ring that goes on that. And then get the other C-clip that we had there. Put that in to hold that assembly in place. Okay, we're in good shape there. This should turn easily, which it does. And uh, this one can go get installed. Oh, of course, I put the seat clip on too early. I had to put that case back on. Silly me. Let's get that clip off again. This is not a high pressure clip here. Some of these are really hard to get off. This one pretty easy. You can do it with hand strength. Okay, so this is going to wind up on the side here. I just had that little washer for the C-clip fall off. Now I can put it in on this side. I can mesh my gears with the pinion gear. And now I have the swing proper for the axle shaft that uh, we'll install in a moment. Right now I want to go back to the other side. I want to grab that washer and the C-clip now that I have that assembly in place. And again, that's not a high pressure one. You can actually push that one back in with your hand. All right, and that's the setup there. So let's come up top then, put that rotor back on. The rotor is in good shape and it's clean below. Let's just load that. You want to line that up so that you can put your keyed washer in there. You need to get that washer on both sides and it's a uh, rectangular kind of a face there. Then this, and we go for the rotor nut. And we tighten that down. Again, I'm using a Mitchell tool. It's a 12 millimeter, but if you don't have this tool, that's fine. It's not uh, exclusive to Mitchell. It will work on other pieces. But what you do want to make sure that you do is um, you want to make certain that you have the uh, deep socket there. Okay, now we can come back in with our axle shaft. And again, I've taken care on this one. You might want to clean that off. You can use steel wool again. Make sure you get that lubed, so grab a brush and some fishing reel lube and put that on. Slide that through the top. Down below, we have this little 
swing arm now. So that's the first piece that gets mounted there. And you want to align the hole on that. So that you can put that little screw in. Grab that little screw. And your micro screwdriver. Like I said, they take advantage of you here and need every tool in the bag, basically. But eventually you do get it. So these are well engineered reels, there's no question about that. And uh, the engineering at the time was very interesting in terms of how this was all set up. Let's see if I can get this on without having to uh, remove everything again. I just need a little bit of clearance here. Probably shouldn't have done the one piece without the other, but I just want to see if I can do this. And I can't, so once again I'm going to take that little C-clip off there. It's been a while since I worked on one of these, you can tell. I don't want to say rusty, but I want to say that uh, maybe I'm not bringing my A game here. Let's go ahead and do it this way again. For those of you that are interested in how this all comes together, well, you're you're learning by my uh, playing around with it here. Okay, gee whiz, that took a while. Okay, there's a little clip here that goes on top of the screw and the screw itself. And now I'm trying to hang on with about five different things going here. This is an easy part where you can uh, mess things up around your bench. So make sure that you know where you've left your parts if you've chosen to uh, to leave some on the bench and not put them into a uh, parts tray. All right, this is your screw for the crosswind. that up. A lot of forces in play here. All righty, got it. Back over here one more time with this little guy. And with our little C-clip. Now we can align our case and put our other case on. We'll grab our badge, which was facing down, if you remember. Come over here and put the case screws in. get one started, it's easier that way. I'm not sure we're started, you can generally see. Sometimes you have to play around with it. There we go. Two more of those screws.
whatever reason I'm having a little difficulty just getting that set. Shouldn't have any difficulty with the last one now. Alrighty. Just make sure the side plate is squared up there. And we can tighten that down. Next step then is the adjuster. Then that little spacer washer. And our handle. And the reverse on this handle now it gets kind of tapped in, right? So Sometimes that's the, the one that's the, the, the toughest of all, is that little ball pin there. You want to get enough of, its, of the stud started there so that you can feel it in the, the slot. Okay, so I had to go off camera to, to tap down that roll pin. So we're nearing the moment of truth in terms of the internal work on this. Next up then is that spool that we, we, we worked. This is going to have to have its line changed. It's all knotted up and, and beat up in there, but let's see what we can do here in terms of the... Uh... So there's a nice smooth operator when we're in neutral, that no click, no anti-reverse. We have a little bit of a bump here. terribly noticing but there's a, a mechanism in here that is going in and out and that's possibly that there's a little stick going out that nothing terrible that's going to be annoying but that certainly is working and how how did we do on that drag well we're, we're nice and tight on that drag so we're not tight on this that's why you got a bunching in that uh, that line but the, the spool and the drag assembly is certainly holding so there you go that's uh, that's how you deal with the internals and swapping a handle on a, uh, on a damn quick uh, 440. And uh, we're going to play around with this. Now, I, he gave me two of these reels. And as I noted, when I look at the, the bail that's working, when we come over here, we have a nice right angle. And when we come over to this one, the reason why it's flopping is that it's not. It has a piece that's chipped off of that. Now we're going to just try and file that down to try and make it square. I'm not sure if that can be done, but that's the cause for this uh, running past where it should and winding up like this. It's not catching on that point. So that'll be uh, a separate video, but uh, we'll see what we can do to, to remedy that. It may be that we need a new bell uh, to correct that situation. All right, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tiger. If you liked it, uh, please indicate that and uh, go ahead and subscribe to see more. And uh, have a great day.